Hi, I welcome you all for Java 8 video series. In the last video, we discussed about the introduction of the Java 8 video series. In this video, we are going to discuss about Lambda Calculus. As I stated in the earlier video, the very fundamental prerequisite to learn Java 8 functional programming is Lambda Calculus. Probably most of you would have learned Lambda Calculus in somewhere in your school days or in your college days. So we need to approach this Lambda Calculus learning on mathematical viewpoint. So I have gathered certain understanding of what Lambda Calculus in a pictorial representation in the upcoming slides. Hope that will help you to understand the base of what Lambda Calculus is all about. With the help of the understanding of Lambda Calculus, we can actually apply the learning when it comes to Java 8 Lambda functions or functional programming. Now, if you look at the uh, fundamental of Lambda Calculus, Lambda Calculus has a function repre representation in it. So firstly, we have to observe that how this Lambda Calculus is functioning internally. So we need to consider the Lambda Calculus as a black box, okay? And in that black box, we are going to offer an input and the black box is going to process the given input and then produce an output. Now, internally to that black box, what happens is of no idea because that's why the name itself is given as a black box. So Lambda Calculus is going to abstract the functionality that's going to happen inside the black box. And such expression of Lambda Calculus will be termed as Lambda functions. Let's take some graphical understanding for this. Now I have a black box. You can see that I've stated that it is abstracted. Meaning is what? What is there inside the black box is not revealed. It's completely abstracted. So, to the black box, we are going to provide an input. And let's say the input is going to be a, an X. Now, please be noted that I'm going to uh, explore, make you people to get explored about the Lambda Calculus from a mathematical point of view. So I consider an input called X and the X is going inside your black box, which does its process. And then it finally produces an output and the output is going to be like x plus 1. So you give an input called x and you get an output called x plus 1. What happens inside that black box is not revealed because lambda calculus functionality is all about abstracting the actual process inside the uh, inside the functionality of that uh, of that statements. Now let's take another example. I have another black box here and you provide an input and the input is going to be x this time. The very first input is going to be of X and the next input that I'm going to give is Y. So you have an X input and you have a Y input. In the earlier demonstration, we gave single input, but here it's all about the two inputs. Once you give that two inputs into your black box, it performs some abstracted operations in it, which has been predefined and then it generates an output and the output is going to be X plus Y. So it's more similar like the previous one, but this time, there are two unknown variables are there. One is X, another one is Y. And you offer that variables into the black box. Black box will perform some operations and then produces an output of X plus Y. So altogether, if you see, Lambda Calculus is abstracting its functionality. It's actually encoding it. The actual process is getting encoded. Okay means it's abstracted, means it's not revealed. So now we need to consider this as a Lambda Calculus function. The Lambda Calculus function is none other than a black box, which abstracts its actual uh, functional statements. It expects an input and then it produces an output. Now let's try to define a function in Lambda Calculus so that you will get a little bit of uh, more uh, a brief of understanding when it comes to lambda calculus. 
Now, the one example that I can take here is an incremental function. That's what we saw in the previous uh, uh, diagram where you gave x as an input and it produces x plus 1. So it increments the given unknown variable value. So here the function says it's f of x equals x plus 1. This is a general mathematical notation of statements. You have a function which takes a parameter of x and then it does its uh, functionality of x plus 1. Now how do we denote this into a lambda calculus perspective? Now to equate this functional statement, we need to apply a lambda symbol for it. The lambda symbol will appear like this. Now what this lambda symbol denotes is, I'm going to abstract this expression, how the lambda symbol denotes your function and followed with the function's parameter which is none other than x. And then you have to apply a dot notation that separates your expressional code and your functional signature. What I mean by signature is f of x is a functional signature and the expression for that functional uh, f of x is none other than x plus 1. So I separate them with a dot notation and you have a reference called m. This m is actually a reference which refers to this x plus 1. So if you see here, lambda symbol denotes to the f in the function of f and x is none other than the parameter which it takes in it, the function's parameter and m will represent your expression, the function's expression. So lambda x dot notation separates your expression and the signature in it dot m. So if you provide this lambda x dot m to someone, what we understand here is it's, it's a kind of an encoded code. What happens inside that functionality, no one knows. But if you give an input of x, you get an output, let's say I'm giving x as 2, so you get the output as 3. But why the output 3 comes, no one knows because the functionality is completely abstracted. If you look at the f of x equals x plus 1, it's well known that any uh, kid can even bring out an output for it. If f is provided with a value of 3, the output is going to be 4. But when you look at the lambda calculus, it's completely abstracted, right? So this is how you represent a lambda expression in lambda calculus. And this is again denoted as a lambda function. So lambda functions are nothing but a black box. It awaits for an input of its parameter x, and then it produces an output. What happens inside the exact black box? No one knows because it's completely encoded. So the symbol lambda actually comes from the Greek letter lambda. That means abstraction. It's used to indicate abstraction in, uh, in Greek environment. So the lambda is all about abstraction here. So lambda calculus is abstracting its uh, functionality and its expression. Okay, so let's see some uh, expression-based demonstration to understand how this lambda calculus is actually performing its operation. My means I'm trying to decode it. So let's take another example here. So f of x comma y equals x plus y. This is the second demo. For this expression, we need to equate to a lambda calculus function. So how do we denote that? As usual, we need to bring up the lambda symbol, where that lambda symbol denotes the f in it, and you have an x, which is the first parameter. Then you have to apply a dot notation to separate the second parameter of that function. So it's lambda again, and then forward your y. y is the second parameter in that function signature, right? Now we are done with the signature. The next is, you will go for denoting x plus y. That x plus y will be represented in, in some format of m. That m is a reference which refers to that expression. Here I haven't denoted with the uh, uh, m or n notations. Rather, I'm trying to decode it. So directly I'm approaching the expression as x plus y. If someone looks onto it, it's completely abstracted in nature to a certain extent. So it's not known that what's inside the functionality of a lambda calculus function. 
but compared to the previous uh, expression there it took single parameter and here it is taking a couple of parameters in its function and it operates it internally and produces an output so two input process it and generate one out output it's a simple lambda calculus expression so whenever you look at the lambda symbol you have to refer the f in it and then the x and y re refers to the parameter of that lambda function expression and the x plus y, y is the actual operation that happens inside the black box and produces a final output now if you look at the uh, in the corner in the left corner you can see that there is a, a, a i mean a, a java symbol is there where uh, it's actually working around with the lambda symbol okay so so this this denotes that java 8 is actually going to follow the principle of lambda calculus okay so that's what the java 8 means to say from this uh, pictorial representation that you can see on the left hand side of the slide great now let's take one more example to have a quick understanding of this uh, lambda calculus with that we end the note of this lambda calculus given a simple polynomial expression like x to the power of 3 minus 2 into x plus y it's a general expression and uh, you can take a note here like if you are not aware of what i mean by polynomial okay there's a quick note is provided here you can have a, a gist of understanding from there now i convert this to a functional expression like this f of x equals x to the power of 3 minus 2 into x plus y i'm sorry 5 so this is a generic expression now for this expression we need to uh, manipulate a lambda calculus expression means encoding it in terms of lambda calculus so we bring up the lambda symbol and then x denotes your parameter then i'm expanding it because it's a pretty bigger expression that we have so we start with the square brackets and then we refer that x to the power of 3 it means it's power of 3 here it's not x into 3 it's x to the power of 3 minus 2 into x plus 5 and then you close your square bracket so this gives another approach of uh, lambda calculus expression okay now this we can take it for further manipulations if you look at the next slide i'm going to bring up the input for that x actually so in the previous slide we have the x input in the lambda now we need to offer a real-time value for that x parameter so what happens if i give a real-time input for that x parameter and how the expression will produce an output that's what which we are going to see here so given an input for x in lambda calculus for this particular expression how do i apply your input so if you want to provide an input for the lambda calculus how do you do it you need to embrace the whole expression i insist again you need to embrace the whole expression with the braces okay parenthesis once you offer the parenthesis it denotes that you are ready to offer an input for the variable x how do we provide an input let's say 2 input x equals 2 so you offer that 2 there after the braces the parenthesis you are going to apply the number 2 probably people who are already aware of this lambda calculus might knew about this expression so don't feel so weird that why i'm giving too much of detailed ex explanation keeping in mind that there might be few people who are not actually aware of lambda calculus i just wanted to give a note on it but at the end only when you are aware of this lambda calculus expressions you can actually understand the need of a lambda uh, in java 8 that why we need to go for, go for a functional programming lambda calculus is actually helping to provide a functional programming nature of code so now we have offered the input of 2 for this uh, parameter of x now how this is going to be decoded now once you offer the 2 to the x you are actually substituting the value 2 for x in there so you have lambda 2 where x represents that 2 there so we substituted the value 2 for x 2 to the power 3 minus 2 into x which is 2 plus 5 this can be further uh, refined to another arithmetic operation output like 8 minus 4 plus 5 
that's none other than 2 to the power of 3 is producing 8 in it and you have minus 4 which is 2 into 2 and then plus 5. So there are certain arithmetic uh, uh, operations being done internally to it and then you produce another arithmetic operations which is 9, uh, 8 minus 4, uh, 8 minus 4 is uh, 4, 4 plus uh, 5 produces an output called 9, stands the final output. So when you offer an lambda calculus expression, what is actually happening inside that lambda calculus expression is not revealed because it's a black box. You only get to know the encoded statement of the lambda calculus. You provide the input where it substitutes the input value to the appropriate parameter of x and y and then it uh, does its operations in it and produces a final output called 9 as in this case of uh, lambda calculus expression. So now I've given a brief note about how we derive with the lambda calculus function. So this is a complete lambda calculus function and for this lambda calculus function we have provided an input and for the parameters of that lambda function. With that we derive to the final output of 9. Now how we can uh, compare these learning with the functional programming. That's what which we are going to see in the next video. So now we got an, some basic idea of how a lambda calculus would look like. The lambda calculus statements clearly states that it's a kind of a black box where the abstraction layer is done. You just offer an input. What happens inside the black box is of uh, no idea and it produces a final output. Now how we can relate this learning with the next learning of functional programming is what we are going to approach in the next video. Thank you.